What's up? What's up? Wizard Foo here, making song bringer. Today I'm working on the Ice Boss some more. This guy's turning out pretty good, actually. Uh, this thing started really coming together last night. And um, it was weird. I had some ideas like, oh, I want to do this and that for... Like I had this idea where some guys would come, you'd be able to like spawn other creatures. What's that, T? Fuck up. But it didn't really, you didn't really need to have other creatures spawn. All you needed was these uh, sort of ice trail things that were coming out of the way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is keep on working on the art. How you doing, T? What's going on today, man? weird. Music volumes, one, sounds, one. What? What? Oh, there it goes. All right, cool. Yeah. So there we go. Now we got sound. So, um, I think I'm actually going to save it um, as invincible for now. Just makes it easier to kind of um, play with the art f section. Uh, today I was just mostly going to focus on art. Oh, that was weird. I guess I can't save it as invincible. Something weird happens there. Oh, that's because those things don't die. It's invincible. Okay, whatever. We'll just have to fight these guys every time. Hail! Well met! Yes, what's up? What's up, Sal Dongs? So yeah, I gotta... Um, since the behavior is all working really well, and actually the, this boss fight is fun already, um, I'm just gonna focus on the art today, mostly. So... Yeah, it's, I'm gonna keep on working on this guy and make him look a little bit better and better and hopefully I can come up with a look that I'm really happy with. Um, just like improving, you know, improving the look of this, you know, working on the details, things like that. So I may only spend, I may spend the entire stream just working on this one image right here. And then once I'm happy with it later on, I'll go and reanimate everything. I've already got, let's see, here's the ice boss animation for when he closes his eye, there'll be several more frames there. And then there's also the appearing animation where he kind of like just appears and stuff. I think I might actually do a special kind of sprite for this instead so it can have a different Z order for its bottom half. So instead of doing that animation, it'll be a little more efficient. Um, and then also there's this snorting animation where he like launches his ice thing, his ice trail thing and then he's got a hurt animation where he's just like takes a hit so all that um it kind of it all kind of depends on this animation or this first frame looking really good what's up space my name yeah so since the behaviors all looking good or working well um yeah i'm just gonna focus on this one frame right here and then later on i'll do all the animations so this is gonna be mostly sort of painting I guess you could say. So crack out your cadmium yellow and your your crimson elimzerin red and follow along. All right, so I like these little little patches of color here. This is pretty nice. I want to do a little bit of Let's just have some fun, huh? Let's just have some fun. And like little patches of green. Yeah, that works. I really gotta get um, him looking more 3D though. Okay, I'm gonna start with this bottom half. 
Hail and well met. <laughs> That's awesome. So it's really important to think about like what I've learned so far making pixel art and stuff is that it's important to think about how things fit 3D. Like what, you know, this little strip of darkness here, I'm trying to create the, sh the impression that that's just not going to work. Um, I'm, you got to think about how things fit in the 3D world, you know? Hey, you guys watching SGDQ? What's going on with SGDQ? I saw they were playing Mega Man. Yeah. What's a okay? So what's um. What else has they been playing? There's Super Mario World? Nice. Really? 15 year old? That's cool seeing people that are 15 years old playing old school games. His grandma was in the audience? Whoa, nice. I might have to check that one out. Oh yeah, that definitely adds some nice contrast to this whole image here. Can imagine like his he has like sort of like a ridge to his shoulder here. Yeah, this is looking good. She kept asking, "Is he doing well?" <laughs> oh. oh, grandma. Oh, and it was a low percent. Oh, wow. Oh, that's that's tough. Cool, man. I really got to check out that run. It sounds cool. What was that color that these guys... Had? Oh, yeah. I used like a purple color for the, the ridge there. Let's use that same purple color. And create some like... Some spines on this guy's back a little bit. People were donating comments. They were saying nice things about the kid's grandma. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm definitely checking out that run. It's Friday. Every day is kind of Friday for me, though. Before there was a three-player Super Mario World race. Ooh, sweet. Three-player? How did they do three player? Did they have one person on on or two people on one controller? All oh, three separate? Whoa. Wow. Oh, it was a race. Oh, I get it. It was a race. So, he, so who could... Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, that's... That's... Oh, that's right. You showed, you shared that one with me with... Uh, where they were, they were playing Zelda, but it was a race. And somebody kicked... The other guy got so excited that he kicked the other guy's... He accidentally reset the other guy's control accidentally reset the other guy's console. Uh, it was, his name was Andy. I forget. I remember Andy. Does that look cool? I can't tell if that looks cool yet to have some spikes on his back, but... Let's see how... Uh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna give this a little more, a little more energy before I check it out in the game just yet. I need to find. I need to make his head look a little more three D here. Yeah, the reverse boss order run that was really cool. Yeah, I know. I'm sure it was a really a, an accident, but like subconsciously, it might have been a subconsciously intent. You know, intended. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Right? Yeah, you know what? You get so into it, too. You're the one running. You're going to get so into it that things like that happen. <laughs> I know, yeah, that was the funniest part, right? It was watching the chat freak out about him. They're like, apologize, Andy. Say sorry, Andy. And like, of course, Andy's not reading the chat, so he's just playing the game. So he doesn't know that everybody's like, say sorry, Andy. Yeah, you know what? I'm really learning that art takes focus. Like to make really good art, you you really gotta focus and think about how things would be in in the three in three D. It's kind of my biggest lesson of learning to make art. It's like really the the whole the whole thing about making art is like that you're you're trying to make things look three D in two D. I guess not if you're making 3D models, but like I'm talking about two dimensional art like this or texturing or whatever. It's, it's, it's all about really just making two dimensional things. Or I mean, yeah, expressing three dimensions on two, on two dimensional plane. And we'll just make a little happy little nose here. In our little world, we might have a snout. And the snout, it's always better if a snout has a friend. So we'll give him two snouts. In our little world, there lives a snout. And the snout snorts. Yeah, that's helping. It's definitely helping do a little bit of this 3D stuff around the edges and maybe same thing on this other side here too. So maybe control inverse, inverse the, yeah, let's make it look more 3D. Yeah, that helps. Nice. Maybe not so much here though. Yeah, it doesn't help there. Not as much. Yeah, that's working. Cool. Hmm. 
Teak, oh nice, Teak. Two days in a row. <laughs> that's that's definitely more than seven for sure. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> Boogie, you're a genius, man. You're a genius for making the seven point thing. It's hilarious. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Okay, this is something I need to see in the game. Put this in the game. Right up there. Yeah, it's the right place. Backgrounds. Because this guy's so big, I'm considering him a background. Yeah, so it might be a short stream today. I'm already kind of kind of hungry already but I'll do I'll do at least an hour of the stream today oh yeah oh once it's in the game it looks a lot better yeah it kind of gives him a 3d three-dimensional feeling with that top bit yeah this is already looking a lot better Cool. Okay. Switch the stream over to the social eating category. <laughs> Is that really a category? Uh, if that's not a category, it needs to become a category. It's, it really is? Oh my god, what? Social eating? Okay, experiment time. I want to try if he has a horn. Got this kind of, I was always kind of imagining this little ridge here thingy as a, as a horn. So maybe, maybe he should actually have a, this be a horn. And it should maybe turn upward. I don't know. I don't know. It's just dreams of people eating. Oh my god. I want my yeah. I need a better. I need. A, I need to work on my keyboard shortcuts really quick. I need a keyboard shortcut for selecting. Um, selecting what's it called? Select. Uh, oh no, it's tools. Or whatever. Oh wait, this is it. Tools. Move tool. It's magic wand tool. Here we go. That should be R. Yep, and accept and go to conflict. No rotate tool. Good, accept. Okay, and save. All right. So now I can press R to do that. Nice. That'll save some time. Whoops. Ah, oh, I lost my color. Tell me I lost my color. What? Oh, I was just I was deleting.
Okay, there we go. There's an upside down horn. I'm going to put this in the game to see if that looks right with an upside down horn. And this looks really weird there, so I'll get rid of that. Social eating? <laughs> what? Hmm. Well, I guess that does look pretty cool. But maybe he should have some teeth. They should be more like teeth instead of horns. Or maybe they should be flipped over yeah let's try flipping it first flip it just flip it flip it over Is that somebody following? Thank you for following somebody. Yeah, I think this might actually look better flipped over like this. Oops. <laughs> salad dogs eats his salad. All right, let's see what that looks like. Does the horn flip the other way? What's up, Zylaws? I use a I use a C plus plus. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Teak. There you go. Bafu sends it all. Thanks, Teak, doing the engine command. Balaam. Okay, so yeah, there we go. That does look better. I like his horn that way. Actually, I don't even know if he needs any more horns now. Maybe he at least needs a back a another horn in the back. I was, I was trying to draw my graphics habit the other way. I'm like, why isn't it working? All right, okay, so yeah, another horn in the back would really help, I think. <clears throat> Maybe like this. Yep, you're welcome, man. Feel free to ask whatever you want. What it uh tell us tell us about yourself, man. What do you do? You you didn't, you learning to make games or what? Yeah, I think this could do nicely there. A little bit of that. And it would, he would, if I'm imagining, his skin would kind of have like a little flap almost if he had a horn there. So that'll look all right there. Yeah, it's pretty good. Audacity seems to be confused. Upper one sixty, middle. 
Are you making the sounds right now in Audacity? Wow, that's really different, huh? Wow. Just with one hertz? Xylos, you're learning. Nice. Yeah, right on. Cool. Other people's progress for sure. There's um, what? So there's a link. Um, check out this link. This is really great if you're just learning. Yeah, there you go. That's a pretty cool um. Check out that list of videos. This is from uh, Extra Credits, and they have a whole video series on getting started in game development. I really think that's one of the best things you could do as a game developer when you're first starting out is to check out those videos from Extra Credits because Extra Credits, they're amazing. You're creating a laser ambient sound. That's really weird that that one hertz made such a difference. Or, or did it? Or did it? Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Do, 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 do. Okay, so yeah, his his head is looking pretty good. Let me all focus on these little patches of highlights for a second. Get put these in the right places if he's like what this. Um, yeah, yeah, little patch of right there. A little patch of right here. A little patch of right here. Oh no, your sound engine broke. What? What? I don't want him to look too plasticky though. Yeah, these it's I don't know, some about this is giving me the plastic feeling. Oh well. I'm just gonna ignore that for a second. Okay, I'll focus on this bottom this is uh shoulder here. Yeah, it's definitely gonna have a highlight a little bit. Maybe some scales. Yeah. So if he had, let me think about how this would like draw scales. Not bad, actually. This is kind of looking all right.
this scale is a little brighter. Oh yeah, these highlights look alright. Kinda. Doop do 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 do. What happened to that highlight highlighty purple color? I was like, I didn't have a highlighty purple color. Alright, make one. Highlighty purple color. Open AL. Nice. Yeah. Sound dongs, are you gonna do that? When are you gonna do your sound engine? Oh, it's not high on your list of priority. What's your what's your priority list? What's what do you gotta do next with your set with your game engine? Hmm. Oh yeah, he's definitely looking cooler already. I like those ridges and spines, yeah. That looks sweet. Ah, frozen! Yeah, and that reflection really adds a lot to this image. Oh, and the yeah, the the ridges on his shoulder look really cool in the reflection too. Get him, flames! Sometimes I just get, I get distracted playing the game. All right, back to it, back to it. Make some art, make it better, make the art better. Maybe, if he had a shoulder right there, he might have a little, like, like this. You don't have a specific list, oh. Uh-huh. What's the next logical thing? Oh, you're separating rendering in a separate layer. Oh, cool. Nice. Are you gonna do um are you gonna do multi-threading?
Nice. multi -serial job queue. Cool. I think it's kind of necessary with the game engine. You got to have like a... You got to have at least your rendering code in a, mul in a different layer, you know, or in a different thread. I already kind of sort of use multiring. Ah. Uh. Oh, you're using CV Display Link? Oh, uh-huh. I wonder if that's how Coco's 2DX does it. I think they actually do. So they do have this display link director. CA display link. I think they're using CA display link. What's up, Aaron? Uh-huh. What's the difference between CA display link? Oh, totally. Yeah, the ice dragons are looking good, man. Yeah, let me show you. I'm working on the art for it right now. Yeah, I'm working on this bit here. This, this is kind of how he looks now. So let me show you what it looks like in the game. Oh, core video, core animation. Oh, yeah. So yeah, there's only I only have a couple frames done of the new animation, so but the little dragons, these mini dragons here on the sides, they're done. So yeah, the brightness is totally totally fixed. It's just that I had to kind of draw their their um draw them not quite so white. So they do have a few white highlights if you get closer, if you get if I get really close to them, you can see there's a few white highlights and those look pretty bright. But um, it works now, you know, it works because, uh, because yeah, their colors are a little darker, but also because Jib's light is a little bit more softer. Uh-huh, yeah. Hmm. So this is all just to get V-Sync, basically. Windows XP. Huh. 
Huh, I don't know about these extra little ridges. Let's see that. I still got XP on one of my computers. I, I got a 32-bit computer. It's got XP still. Yeah, Windows 7 was pretty good too. I still have Windows 7 on um, on one of my uh, V boxes. You kind of got to have if you're gonna play if you're gonna be making games. You kind of have to have as many OSs as you can get to test on. Okay, yeah, I yeah, I don't like those ridges there. These extra ridges. So what to do here without those Oh, okay, I'll do something like this. Use some of this darker color to create some uh some hints of hint of sort of body armor kind of stuff. You're currently resting your feet on a 32-bit PC? <laughs> nice. Uh-huh. Oh, it's like a de device context thing. Yeah, nice. What uh what Linux distro are you running? I love um I love elementary OS. It's a new Ubuntu based one. But I love it because it's so much it looks so well and it's like super lightweight. It's like installs to only you can install it to like only two gigs or something like that. Um but it also looks really beautiful. It's a pretty pretty great OS. But yeah, I've, I got Ubuntu as well. Where would these, what would this, if you had this piece of body armor, what would, I guess you would kind of have like another ridge like that, like this, like that, maybe something like this. And this would be kind of like this and that. That. Yeah. Old Pentium 4? Whoa. Yeah. Low end testing. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Start messing around with Linux for sure. Yeah. Just play with it at first. You know, get used to it. You. I mean, you understand. You got Mac. So you can, you know. Do you have Unix experience already? Oh, you're running Ubuntu as well? When you got Mint? If you're really badass, you'll do Arch. I've heard Arch is pretty good. Arch is kind of like the Slackware of today. You recompile everything from the ground up, so bare minimal if you want. Thing that gets me is I have no idea how to figure out how to ensure compatibility. Oh, across multiple Linux distros. Yeah, I know. I mean, really, the thing to do with Linux is to is to like is to just realize that um, S Steam does a lot for you. So nice. You like Chrome OS? Wait, I don't even know what Chrome OS is. I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it really. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like multiple distros, just don't worry about it so much because as long as they're as long as the their Linux distro can run Steam, Steam is going to set itself up. Steam actually installs a whole bunch of like, um, of you know, modules and other types of things so that you um, you've got what you need to do games. So, all right, Zylos, see you, man. Oh, this looks pretty good. Oh, this is Chromium OS. Is that the same thing? Uh, 
is this a full full fledged distro? Or is this kind of like watered down? Like, I mean, like locked down. Does it lock you down? Can't do stuff or something like that, or what? Google Chrome OS. An OS in which both applications and user data reside in the cloud. So it primarily runs web apps. Uh, so it is kind of like lockdown and stuff. Or is it now? So you're at an indie game dev meeting. It was yet yesterday. One of the bigger topics was, is Kickstarter dying? That's a really great topic to talk about, actually. I have some strong opinions on that matter. What it, what was it you guys came up with though? What what um what did you take away from all that? What did you learn? Uh huh. Yeah, Steam. Oh, right. Oh, you you don't have plans for your game being on Steam. Oh, yeah. You don't really have to worry too much about about your game being on Steam. I mean, Steam actually installs stuff for the whole OS that really gets the whole, it gets Linux all set up for gaming. So, like, once you've installed Steam, you're pretty much set for gaming and you don't need Steam at that point to to be you don't need your game to be on Steam. And space, my name's like, I'm going to get some popcorn. So, yeah, Aaron, I'm, I'm kind of waiting for you to tell tell me what you learned and stuff before I try and, try and like, purport my opinion. Nice, yeah, Gog, Itch. Most of the more well-known people there, including myself, thought that Kickstarter is dying slowly due to Shenmue 3 and Mighty Number no. 9. I don't know the BS of those games. I don't. Yeah, why don't you, um, instead of me trying to figure it out, you let me know what you're talking about. So were there people on both sides of the debate there? Right, Shenmue 3? What happened with Shenmue 3? Oh, was was Shenmue AAA? I should definitely at least get familiar with this. Shenmue Three. Oh, holy crap. Look at this. 69,000 backers and they raised 6 million. This is probably a triple A effort. Oh, okay. So they have Sony as a publisher already? I, I know. I agree. I agree this is totally killing Kickstarter in a way, sort of, where, where like a publisher will go and make a company do a Kickstarter so that they see if people are interested in it, you know, it's like that part is kind of sucky. Okay, so the months and months after the fact, they told all the backers they actually needed four times that amount. No way, are you serious? They're like, okay, yeah, we need exactly two million dollars. They raised three times their amount, and then they said they need four times that. Yeah, get Sony to give you the money then? <laughs> right, yeah. 
Yeah, they destroyed the truck. Totally. That's the thing. You, it's like you enter into one of the most you ha, you ha, you are eliciting people's trust. You know what I mean? If you break that trust, that's what kills Kickstarter. At, at least it doesn't really. I don't think it really kills Kickstarter. I think it kills it for that this company. I think this company. You know, if they're going to do that to their backers, that's that's horrible. They're never going to have the trust of their backers again. Unless they unless their backers are some of their backers are oblivious, which they might be. But I guarantee you most people are not oblivious to something as big as this. This is very triple A. -E. Wow. I mean, six million dollars and that wasn't enough? Wow. Yeah, so I guess my general opinion on this is that they're not really killing Kickstarter, but they are killing... Well, I, oh no, I, I can see what you mean. I can see what they say. I can see how this actually might tend to... Um, there's other Kickstarters like this too that are like that are really kind of killing it for other people doing Kickstarters like uh what's that one um what's the game with the the dude that wanted to make a game about sword fighting I don't know but there's been yeah there's been several Kickstarters where basically basically if the Kickstarter doesn't end well if they don't live up to their promises if they break the trust of their backers, they are kind of changing the 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 uh, the opinion of most people. You know what I mean? People that might be potential backers of other Kickstarters, if they're seeing things like this go on, I can see how that would be kind of killing Kickstarter in a way. But what my opinion, though, in general on all this is that we're going through like the pioneer days of kick of crowdfunding. You know what I mean? 10 years from now, I still think there will be crowdfunding. I think it will change though over the next 10 years and we're we're kind of like working out the kinks or at least we're or at least we're we're establishing trust, you know what I mean? We're establishing trust between companies that are doing kickstarters or you know indie comp whatever, whatever kind of whatever you want to consider that. Like we're establishing this the whole rules of the game here. And, um, and some companies are going to ruin it for themselves completely. And some companies are going to like sort of, you know, people will, people will eventually, I think, learn to trust people, some people and learn to distrust some other people, you know, it does. Yeah. It does tend to pe make people kind of cynical, right? Yeah. Makes uh huh. Right. Yeah. Kickstarter campaigns are gonna have to do more to prove themselves. Oh, and then Mighty Number no. Nine kept delaying. Ah. Uh huh. Yeah. Delays are almost like inevitable with all video games. It seems like. Yeah. So I think I think I think crowdfunding is from from a from the perspective of a creator who like a so, a solo creator. I'm a I'm a solo creator, um, and a solo. I'm a I did this Kickstarter on my own. You know, I did everything on my own. From that perspective, crowdfunding is one of the best things that has ever come along. Um, because you know, five years ago or whatever, I wouldn't have been able to make this game. Songbringer would not be a reality. I wouldn't be doing any of this stuff. Um, and, but yeah, there's kicks. Crowdfunding in general has its pitfalls. You know, you really got to understand what you're getting into, the trust that you're trying to establish, and that you can't fuck it up. You can't, like, really, you can't break the trust of your backers. That's really the, the whole golden rule of it all, I think. And I think over time, people will, will like, We'll learn that golden rule, right? You know, or or else they'll just keep failing. You know, the ones that don't learn that golden rule, they'll fail. And I think, you know, in time, we'll start to for, I don't know. I guess there's probably a healthy amount of cynicism, right? 
that you can have towards Kickstarters. You probably, in fact, that's probably what will happen. You like, you know, over the next five, ten years, people will kind of generate or build up sort of like a healthy amount of skepticism. In general, I would, I would think. I don't know. You wonder if it has financial limits. Oh right, yeah, that's a pretty, that's a good thought, right? There might be a golden rule on how much like how much you should be asking for. Oh, they had a feminist community manager. Oh no, did she kind of ruin it? Did yeah, I could see if you if you have a community manager that's, that's fucking things up, that could really really be bad for your Kickstarter and and the trust of your backers and all that. Uh, so what happened there? Uh-huh. The perception of the game's vision was being compromised for the sake of political ideology. Oh. She never played Mega Man? What? Oh, man. Oh, that's, that's crazy. Uh-huh. Being commuter is one thing, but the other thing... Oh, she had des influence over the design? Oh. Hmm. I could see that being a bad idea for sure. Yeah, so I my general opinion on the whole matter is like that it's that yeah, yeah, first and it is kind of like hurting kicks it is hurting crowdfunding for for like these these types of uh bad projects and stuff like that and and the distrust it's all doing, but I think in in general it's not going to kill crowdfunding. I don't think it will ever kill crowdfunding. I think it's such a good concept if it's executed right, you know what I mean? That I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll, we'll lose kicks like crowdfunding, but I think it will change a lot over the next five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're saying if you check the game section, it's 90% board games. Huh? I haven't checked all the whole statistics on it all lately. Um, one win though, a, a really cool win that I saw recently was Cologion. Did you guys see Cologion? I, I tweeted about this a couple days ago because these guys were so, they were so far behind or not far, far behind. But they were like they were at like twenty two thousand of their thirty five thousand dollar goal. They were at twenty two of thirty five, forty eight hours before they were done, and that's a lot of ground for them to cover for to go from twenty two to thirty five in forty eight hours. And I was like, it could work, but maybe not. I'm like, let me do whatever I can to try and help these guys because this game looks pretty sweet. So I tweeted about it and stuff like that, and I backed them and stuff. But it wasn't just me, man. They they pulled it through somehow. They they did it. In fact, I'm curious to see their kick their kick track. Uh huh. Yeah, that does mean fewer video game devs are doing kickstarters. Oh, right. Yeah. Exploding Kittens. Right. Yeah, I've seen I've seen Exploding Kittens. I think I, I saw it as it was actually being crowdfunded. So look at this. Look how look at this. This was this was also very much. I was like, dude, I can't believe this. This project's not I thought right around here because this is about when I first discovered it. Like I thought they weren't gonna hit it. But look at this. They really pulled it through. I don't know how they did this. 
especially these last 48 hours. So right here, they were at about 20. That's 25. Yeah, they went from about 23 or 24 to 35 in 48 hours. It's pretty amazing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, another one too, another one on Kickstarter right now that I'm actually kind of stoked about is um, Wizard of Legend. I've been fighting, uh, following these guys for a while, but Wizard of Legend, I haven't backed them yet, but I'm about to because they're they still got 12 days left on there. Look at that, they're at 39 of 50. They're gonna kill it. But yeah, if you haven't seen Wizard of Legend, this is a pretty cool one too. Super great. Super great art. Look at this. This is rad pixel art. Right. I got this reminded, right? Remind me for sure about this one. But I'm about I'm about to get back these guys anyways. <clears throat> Yeah, Kologion did well. Pulled it, man. They just they pulled out a clutch win. That was a total clutch win. Okay, so I don't know what else I'm really gonna do on this this art here. Maybe a little bit more darkness. I guess I could do some. Yeah, I could do some shading. Some sort of 3D shading. Let's try that. Okay, so I'm going to do a 3D shading-ish layer here. Let's use black or maybe dark purple. Yeah, dark purple. Get a brush. How do you go about making your pixel art? Do you do the line art outline first? No, I typically don't do a, a line art. Um, I start with general shapes. I start with, <laughs> this is what I started with. You wanna see what I actually started with, with this drawing? That, that's how I started this art. And I know this looks shitty, right? This looks funny as hell, but all I was doing at first was dialing in the proportions. You know, I, all I did was draw something really shitty really quick and throw it in the game to see how big it should be. That's where I always start with pixel art. I'm, I'm like, wait, okay, proportions. First thing, proportions. Proportions and general shapes. You start with blocky crap like this, and then, you know, you start to make it a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. What's up, Kovarn? Welcome to the stream, man. Okay, so I'm actually gonna use a brush here. I rarely use brushes. I mostly use the pencil. Um, let's get that 4%. Oh, good, this is already set up. So I'm doing his shading for the top of his head. Okay, so all I'm doing Trying to make this look a little more 3D. But not too much. And because it's in a separate layer, it's pretty easy to turn it on or off if it doesn't look good. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, well, if you are if you do miss the stream, there's always the YouTube. You can check out the, all my videos are on YouTube.
<laughs> right, right. Do 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 do. I got Bob Ross's theme music stuck in my head. <laughs> For real, I do. You can never decide what to work on? Yeah, just pick something and go with it. Choosing the wrong thing is better than not working on anything at all. It's true. Yep, yeah, I got every day on YouTube, man. Yeah, you're welcome. Should I program? Should I practice my art? Should I practice 3D modeling? Or should I compose a few musical tracks? The struggle. I know how you feel, man. I know how you feel. I have a personal rule for that though that really helps me, um, and maybe it maybe it'll help you too. Um, I always work on whatever I'm most excited to work on. I know that's a pretty simple, sounds maybe stupid or cheesy, but really that's what I do. I just focus on my heart, man. I'm like, okay, what does my heart want to do today? What do I? F or you don't even have to call it my heart. Like I, I'm like, what do I feel like doing the most today? What excites me the most? right now and and this the struggle for me is in accepting that you know what i mean it's like accepting what it really does excite me because because a lot of the time i'm like okay i would love to create this boss guy but i i should go do this and that's when i that's like the key word the, the red flag word for me is should whenever i hear myself say should i question that completely because um you know, that's that word should never is always a warning flag. It's it's telling me that I'm not actually excited about doing this. I think that I should be excited. So I don't know if that helps or not. Bible thumpo. Oh sorry man, I didn't mean to I didn't mean to soapbox or anything there. All right, so yeah, that's looking a little more 3D. Random number generator. There you go. Oh yeah, that really helped. Mm. 
Nice. Nice. Procedural music generator? Sweet. No, I don't have a degree in anything. No, I'm a college dropout. You just started right on. Nice, right on. Your college, your university has game design? That's sweet. You guys seen about the uh, the dude that's um, the dude that's doing a hundred games in five years? It's probably a good article to check out if you're into making games and game design, and if you're going to college right now. Yeah, this is a dude. He's going to college right now. What's his name? Something James Earl Cox, I think, is his name. But yeah, um, this guy's making, his, his goal is to make uh, 100 games in five years of his going to master's. He's getting, he's getting a master's in game design. So that'd be a cool thing to check out. Maybe, if you're into that. Is that like... Right, so this bottom bit of shading looks a bit too plasticky for me. So I'm going to turn it down a little. Yeah, that's better. So let's see how this is looking. Teak one again, dude. Uh. Uh, what's the random chance of that? Yeah. 
Yeah, he's definitely looking a lot more badass. It's that shading and all that. Yeah, cool. Nice. I really like how this guy's turning out. So, defeating this guy is pretty hard unless you're using the blink well. So if you don't blink away from these these ice things, you just get pummeled because you you get stuck, you get frozen, and then you're you're dead. Yeah. I'm really happy with this. So yeah, there's a lot of work left to do. I gotta now take this this drawing and apply it to all the other all the other animations. He's got an animation where he does his, he's hurt. There's animation where he launches stuff. There's animation where he closes his eye and needs a lot more frames. There's uh, animation where he comes up out of the sky and all that. But uh, I think this is about it for today's stream. I'm I got this started. I, this is really all I wanted to do was get this guy looking a lot better. So I'm happy with this, but I do need to take a break and, and like, you know, think about it a bit. And like, after I take a break and come back to it later, it'll be really apparent, like what, what else might need to be done. You know, it's one of those things where I kind of got to back up off the canvas and just not, you know, not think about it for a minute, get some dinner, come back to it and see if there's anything else that needs to be done before I do all those other frames of animation, because those other frames of animation are, um, they'll be, you know, time consuming. So, shouldn't the dragon rise up after the foot? Yes, definitely. Yep. Yeah. So actually, yeah, he's going to come up after the, um, after they, after they fall for sure. And then once you kill him, once you kill him, there, there's going to be some, uh, some other I'm gonna it's gonna be kind of a new mechanic where some some tiles can actually come back. So you'll be you'll have to find something. Let's see, I've never actually killed this guy yet. Let's see what he looks like when he dies. Yeah, it just disappears. So yeah, there there'll need to be some kind of walkway which appears so you can walk up there and actually get out of this area. And I think It'll work vice versa. So coming into this room, the tiles will fall away after you've, you know, you've gotten to this main platform thing. So what's up, Arcane? All right. So yeah, but that's it. Uh, that's it for today's stream. Um, sorry, it's a short one today. I got to get, uh, like I said, when I started the stream, it's going to be a short one. So. Um, so sorry, Arcane. Sorry, I'm taking off right when you get here. But uh, um, yep, we'll uh, see you guys next time. I probably will stream tomorrow. I'm not sure. No, wait, no, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. I'm going to take kung fu lessons tomorrow. See how that goes. So um, yeah, cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.